Welcome to our next episode of Fandom Family Chats. This is a production of Family Fan Clubs on Facebook. You can find us all over Facebook. You can find us all over social media under Fandom Family Chats. Look us up, get dialed in, get plugged in, and get ready to listen to some crazy people talk crazy stuff. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Fandom Family Chats. I'm your host Maureen and we're here with Jeanette. Hello. And Amanda. Hello. And Tiffany. Hello. And our very special guest from Sweet Magnolias, Hunter Burke, is here with us today. Hi. Hello. <laughs> you are a fan favorite across the board, not just for us, but in our group. Yeah. Like a uh, ridiculous fan favorite. We were really <laughs> upset that you didn't have more screen time, but you got it in season two. I did. I did. They <laughs> rewarded me. It was quite <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, very even, happy. Uh, I had to, my, my daughter, who is 10, is also a fan of the show. And so when I was telling her that we were going to interview Trotter today, she got very excited. And so she asked me to tell you that you were one of her favorite characters and just, she wanted you to know that. So. Oh my gosh. What's your daughter's name? Helena. Helena. Oh, uh-huh. beautiful name. Helena Hunter. All right. Well, tell her I said, thank you very much. I about. definitely will. She'll be very <laughs> happy to hear that. She wanted to make sure she saw the clip of you saying hello to her too. So that's going to make her whole day. <laughs> yeah, she, she said, please tell me Maureen's not going to cut that out. So <laughs> she's happy that, she'll be happy to hear that for sure. So, so tell us like have... what, oh, go ahead, Maureen. I was going to say, we do have some questions for you. So you go right ahead. Um, so tell us what, how did you hear about this role in Sweet Magnolias? And what is it that like drew you to it that made you want to audition and, and try out for it? So uh, I had originally auditioned for a couple of other roles before landing on Trotter, my agent had sent me something. I, I believe the first read was, uh, I think it was for Howie. That was the first one that I got. Oh. And so I was able to study up on, the, on who Cheryl was, and who Dan was, Dan Paulson, the producer, Cheryl Anderson, the showrunner, uh, as well as do some background about Cheryl Woods in the books. And so it was, uh, I had just done a Lifetime Christmas movie not long before the auditioning for this. And so I felt like I was kind of in that mode, that lane already. So I got to read for Howie. Uh, I, I then got another read for, uh, I believe it was Ryan. Um, and then, uh, you know, felt really good about it. And then I think like a week or two later, I was moving at that time too. I'm always moving apparently. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I got the audition for Trotter and I had just gotten back from LA to Louisiana. Uh, my dad was going through prostate cancer treatment at that time. And so I moved back, uh, a relationship had ended. I moved back to be with my dad, also to get some distance. Um, and I was driving back, he picked me up in New Orleans and we were driving to Lafayette, which is where I'm from originally. Um, and uh, and he, uh, I got the audition on my phone. And I was like, dad, I don't know if I wanna do this. You know, I, my, my head's not in the right place. Uh, and he kind of, you know, looked over and gave that dad advice. And he was like, you know, this is what you've chosen to do with your life. Uh, to deny that, you know, is kind of denying who you are and all the work you put into mm-hmm. you might as well, um, you know, give it a shot. And uh, he's like, you can help me cut the grass afterwards because I'm going <laughs> to need it. You're not getting off that easy. Uh, so, yeah, I put myself on tape really quickly. I believe the, the audition, the casting director said, uh, we need this as soon as possible. And so I did it in a couple of hours. And as soon as I saw the sites, I Trotter just immediately like came to life. And I just I knew who this guy was. I knew what his energy was. And fortunately, Having writers like Cheryl and their and the writing uh, department, the writing crew for season one, they just jumped off the page and all the work was done. So I was able to put it down. And uh, like a week went by, I, I didn't hear anything. And then like two weeks went by, and I was like, man, I felt really good about that audition. I wonder what happened. Uh, and like the next day, God, I hate this. It always how it, how it works. Uh, the next day, I, I got a call back uh, in Atlanta. So I drove to Atlanta from New Orleans. And I, had a chance to meet with Cheryl and Dan and Norman and all of the uh, all the crew, the writers and season one crew, and had a chance to read the first two scenes with them and just had a lot of fun. It didn't feel like an audition at all. It felt like, you know, I knew the lines so well by that mm. point. It just felt like it was second nature. Went in there, made a few really bad jokes, which I think went in my favor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, did the audition, walked out. And I mean, as an actor, that's all you can do is walk out feeling like you did the best job and that you got to the core of the performance uh, that you wanted to give. And I walked out, I was like, wow, that was really fun. I forgot that the process can be like this. Mm-hmm. And then on, I think I drove back the next day to uh, Louisiana 
And my agent called and was like, you got it. They love you. I was like, all right. Awesome. Now is Amazing. Trotter, is he heavily in the book? I haven't read the books yet. He's not in the book at all. He was an invention oh. uh, by the writers of season one um, mm-hmm. to kind of fill the void of, of like that presence in the spa, mm-hmm. like having somebody to work there. Um, and kind of, they started to build the story out from that. But as you know, I knew very little about Trotter early on, just that he worked in the spa and he was written so well uh, in the sense that his dialogue is just so shotgun, rapid fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was hard not to just sink in and, and really, I mean, give it everything I had, especially with that team, that family that is the Sweet Magnolia's cast and crew. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Does that does that make it easier for you if it hasn't been written in the books? You can kind of put more of who you think Trotter is in there, or is it more heavily relied on the writers for you? That's a good question. I I think if anything, it gave me some some sense of doing my own thing versus mm-hmm. having to stick to some sort of adaptation or preconceived notion about the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I can get hamstrung about that by trying to please two bosses because I have a lot of respect for, you know, writers in general, but, you know, novel writers and also script writers. And I had a lot of, if I had been in the book, I can surmise that I would have felt a lot of responsibility to do what Cheryl yeah. Woods would have wanted to do because, uh, mm-hmm. because I just, I respect writers so much in that way. Um, but luckily I think I just had a, opportunity to collaborate with Cheryl and, and the team there. And they kind of gave me a lot of, a lot of rope to hang myself, which was really funny. <laughs> On set, it's more, more or less, they, they say, just kind of go and we'll reel you in. Mm-hmm. It's funny how often they don't reel me in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think some of my favorite parts is when I had talked to a director once and he said that one of his favorite things to do as a director is to not yell cut after a dialogue is, is done and just let the actors roll with it. And I think some of my favorite things about Trotter, I don't know if that happened on the set, but it feels so natural coming off of him. And there's one line you said in season two that I absolutely love. And it was where you would come down from upstairs at the spa, of course, at the spa, because I think you're the only one who works at the spa at this point. And you, right. said, <laughs> you said, I've tried to be more than one place at once, but so far all I've managed is to be in three. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines. It's, it just comes off so effortlessly out of you. And I think that it just, it just, it, there's a real naturalness to how you portray the character. Yeah, I wish I could take credit for writing that line. That is all <laughs> Cheryl and, and, and the writers of season two. They really, they, they get the essence. I think one of the things I talked to Cheryl about when we were going into season two is the, the benefit of writing for people that she, the actors that she knew now. Because season one, she didn't really have an idea for some of these mm-hmm. characters. And so now she had a voice and a face in her head. She said she was able to write a uh, a lot based on just who I was and what I brought in season one. But no, that's, again, they give me a lot of rope to hang myself. And like you're saying, like on the the, the buttons, on the bookends of the scenes, I'll, uh, I'll throw a lot of stuff in there. Most of it doesn't make it in, but if anything, I can get genuine reactions from my, mm-hmm. my uh, the other actors in the scene, mm-hmm. which is more than anything what I'm after, especially Justin, he's, uh, or, or Cal, he's, uh, mm-hmm. he's easy to make laugh. Uh, he's, <laughs> I mean, he's he's a great guy, and I think he has a good as a good time as anybody on the set. And I think he and I hit it off pretty quickly. And uh, early on, I realized that he's he's liable to crack uh, before anybody else will. So I'm like, all right, so so you're gonna be the guy. I'm gonna get flat. <laughs> <laughs> now we like hearing good things about Justin because Amanda and Jeanette know him from Grey's Anatomy, and they were That's not right. a fan of his character at all. So it's nice no. that we get these glimpses. It's like Jackson. We hated his character and we had talked to Logan and Simone and they're like, what? You know, he's great. Now we get it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so you mentioned that you were, before you got this, you were filming a Christmas movie for Hallmark. Was that by any chance Christmas contract? It was. It was. I read yeah. that you were in that. We're, well, us except for Maureen are big One Tree Hill fans. So that was a mm-hmm. movie that a lot of that cast was in that. So I was yeah. curious I if think- that was the one. Hillary Hillary Burton uh um she's the lead in that and she was just so Mm -hmm. awesome to work with I think the first day like I showed up uh sight unseen and we did our first scene and she never met we never met each other and uh they kind of hired me because I was a a friend of a friend and it's kind of that nepotism uh in in the industry and uh we started to do the scene and after it was her coverage and after we did the first scene she was like oh oh you're good okay good (laughs) <laughs> we, we, we can do this. We can do this. Uh, and I, just, I got a huge kick out of that because I'd imagine, you know, they'd probably set it up uh, in the past. Not so great, but yeah. that was fun. 
So like, what, did you always know that you wanted to be an actor or work in the entertainment industry or when did you decide that? I did, I think, you know, um, early on in my life, my parents were storytellers. They uh, were quick with a joke or always forcing us, I don't know if forcing is the right word, but encouraging us. Mm -hmm. To, uh, to explore our imaginations. And, you know, we would be out in public and, you know, you know, curious people always wanting to know, you know, what do you think those people over there are doing? You know, we would be at a theme park, and it would, you know, who, who do you think those people over there are? So there was an encouragement in like subtle ways of, of being interested in the world and what people's stories are. And I think it kind of started as the genesis of that. And then also they they were big movie fans. And so we would rent movies uh, constantly. Uh, we had like a Tuesday night tradition where we get, uh, this is so terrible, we get dollar cheeseburgers from Sonic and we would watch VHS from our local rental down the street. And uh, it was such a tradition. And they really, it, it made it such an inclusive atmosphere to be in our family. It was just me and my sister, my mom and my dad. Um, and so they encouraged that. And then I got into the plays as a kid. And I think they, uh, it really just started to call like it was the piece of the storytelling that I had always been after. Um, and I think early on it was like, oh, people are clapping for me. Wow, this is fantastic, you know. Um, and then later became like just a, a fascination and, you know, obsession in some ways about what it is to kind of inhabit and, and see through other people's perspectives. And um, went to college, got a BFA in performing arts, which, you know, um, it's uh, it's served me well in my personal education, uh, and luckily I, I was able to get a scholarship. But outside of that, it was like you have to be an actor, like you have to go do this. Now mm -hmm. it was kind of a point of no return. Um, and uh, luckily, around that time, the Louisiana film industry was kind of getting going, and so I was able to get a start in doing like extra work and stand-in work. Uh, and that was it. Like as soon as I got a taste of what the professional film world was, I was like, this is it. And luckily I had friends who were also exploring those avenues of wanting to be directors and filmmakers and writers, cinematographers. So I was encouraged by my group of friends to, to continue that path. I don't know, had, had I not had that encouragement, I don't know if I would have had the, the wherewithal or the, the gumption to continue that, that pursuit because it, it can be a relentless and often uh, just a beat down of a profession. But uh, mm -hmm. it was not, it was, I, I was lucky and am lucky in that it was nurtured in the right ways early on. And uh, and I've just been able to find new ways of, of getting satisfaction and fulfillment out of it all these years. And so, yeah, I think it's ultimately, it was something I always wanted to do. And I tell this story too, I always wanted to be like, I wanted to be a ninja, uh, a fighter pilot, a fireman, you know, uh, an exercise consultant, all of these things when I was a kid. And so I think this allowed me to do all of those at once, so. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell us about like your time on set, like if you, what the filming process was like and if you had any favorite memories from filming. Yeah, so uh, so season one and season two were very different experiences. Season one was pre-pandemic and season two was mm -hmm. filming during the pandemic. Uh, and so they were, you know, incredibly different in that first season we were free to kind of be around each other. It was more communal. We had more contact. We were able to be uh kind of in each other's spaces at that point and season two was you know we were testing we were masking and the, uh everybody wore masks even the crew so a lot of that kind of removed some personal uh interaction so the experience is varied but i think overall what cheryl and that that creative team what they create is an environment where everybody is encouraged to be their best um and and to bring to bring the simplicity and the laughter and the humor to all of those different uh, aspects of the working day, because filming can be, you know, uh, rigorous and long hours, and the atmosphere that's created on Sweet Magnolias is one of family, and mm -hmm. uh, the everybody just has an understanding of why they're there and what they're doing. And that's a credit to the people that hire their department heads and the people that you know show up to work every day, excited to do what they do. Um, as far as memories, I, I guess I'll speak from more recent experiences. Uh, well, I'll do season one. The first day that I shot for season one, uh, or this the second day I shot was when it was Justin and I bar scene, like the first time you meet Trotter in episode three. Uh, and that was the first time I met Justin too. And that was, we kind of fell into this pattern of just rehearsing this scene to where it was effortless. 
I remember the first scene I actually shot was with uh, with uh, Joe and uh, and Heather, um, Maddie and uh, Helen, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and that was nerve wracking because I knew who both of the I, I you know I had a lot of respect for who both of them are and were and uh, and luckily that scene is me interviewing for a job and it felt it felt it was the the least act, amount of acting I've ever had to do because it, I was nervous you know I, I really wanted to fit in this cast and do the best thing, the job that I could do. Uh, and they had just been like there, you know, we were episode three at that point. So they were like in a rhythm. So I just wanted mm-hmm. to be a part of it. And so that that early scene for Trotter, it's just very tense. And it's like, <laughs> give me this job. I need it. I'm going to talk a million miles a minute. Let me keep this job. God. Um, but then more recently, like the season two stuff has been really awesome because we got to play basketball and that was really fun. And that was mm-hmm. a, really clever way that the writers figured out to bring the guys in the community mm-hmm. together to kind of do essentially what the pour it out nights are for the women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so that was really fun. We shot in a park not far from where uh, I was staying. We would show up like an hour ahead just to shoot and like, you know, talk to each other. And so when they, when it came time to shoot, we were almost always in a rhythm. Um, I think the, the, man, Justin could not hit a shot that day, nor could anyone else though, in his defense, but man, he was, uh, he, he was taking the most flack. As you can see, he's kind of a punching bag on set, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, but he, he, I think he had to shoot once or twice in the scene and I think they just cut it. <laughs> they were like, we're not gonna do this. <laughs> um, and at one point I slapped the ball out of his hand. I remember that uh, and that was not scripted and like, it's, it's the, the take that they used in there in the mm-hmm. first basketball mm-hmm. scene. I slapped the ball out of his hand and his my, his reaction is valid. Like it's, <laughs> it's genuine because he did not know I was going to do that. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, just those scenes, those basketball scenes were always really fun because I also like to play basketball a lot. So we were able to get both of that in there. <laughs> I was surprised by that scene, but it, it fits so well. And I liked seeing that side of all the guys in Sweet Magnolia. That we've, yeah. I feel like we've been missing. I mean, it's a, obviously it's about the sweet magnolias, but you still you get invested in these other male characters that you want more of. So it was a really refreshing take on it. I like that scene a lot. Yeah, I think had it been, you know, had COVID never happened, it might have been in a bar. But I think that was a clever workaround mm-hmm. to be able to do that outside because it was, you know, it's less risky to shoot something like that outside. Um, and then it's uh, the guys. It's like you're saying the guys are kind of. Not, I wouldn't say supplementary, but the the magnolias themselves are kind of the core of the show. So mm-hmm. to be able to get the guys in some capacity to relate to each other all at the same time, I think is a really clever way of like bringing those characters out and seeing them like bounce off of the other men in the community, which, mm-hmm. you know, again, hats off to the writers. They figured that out pretty early mm-hmm. on, implemented it. <laughs> awesome. Now, you so must you have done some theater in uh, college, correct? I did. So is that something you've carried on through? Uh, I have not, unfortunately. I love to do it. It's uh, the rehearsal process and that everything that goes with preparation for putting something up is not very conducive to auditioning mm-hmm. in the film and television world. Uh, it's something that I really miss just because there is such a, uh, a process and the rehearsal is kind of the it's where you find the gold it's where you make the discoveries yeah. and you kind of have to expedite that process when you do it for film and television and it's great because you get really good at it really fast uh, but there is something about like sitting with that material for weeks and putting it on its feet and watching how other people are processing their their characters that I really do miss that one of my favorite things was always like the tech days you know when we mm-hmm. would go cue to cue and we would figure out like how the lights are going to do it because it felt like summer camp. It was like, we're yeah. here for the entire day uh, mm-hmm. and we have nothing to do. And we, we already know our lines. We already have like the basic blocking and like, we're really just kind of living in this moment with each other. And I really do miss that. Of course, the performances were always nice too. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it seems like they, the, the creators at Sweet Magnolia really kind of create an atmosphere like that. Cause it's almost mm-hmm. like this, this, uh, this, cadre of players you know it does feel very Shakespearean and that, that there's a bunch of people that come in to do the plays you know you never know who you're going to be paired up with until you get the script and then you mm-hmm. get in there and it's like oh yeah I know you we had a scene like you know three episodes ago mm-hmm. or in season one and so it is that like spontaneity that you can kind of get with film uh, that you don't necessarily get well you can get it with theater but just in a different way yeah um, but yeah I, I do miss it I think if I can get to a place where I can kind of uh, control the projects as they come, and I don't know if that'll ever happen, because what is control? 
but can can understand and process the projects as they come. I'd love to get back to some form of theater just because of that. I miss that experience. Mm -hmm. You mentioned like, you know, obviously things were different because of COVID filming season two. Did that affect like how, how long you were on set or how many hours it took to do different things or what else about the process did that affect? Yeah, I think the, it, it really, they, one of the things I think, I, feel, I don't think they did this in season one. We, we would shoot two episodes at a time. So they would bring the director in <clears throat> for two episodes. Uh, so we would kind of block shoot these two episodes over the course of four weeks, four and a half weeks, something like that. So one day I would be shooting episode three and then the next day I would be shooting episode four. And then the next day I would go back to episode three just to kind of get all of the schedule in because it's so many people and so many schedules. Um, that part kind of felt new to this show. I don't think it was like that in season one. Um, and then, yeah, you, you're, you're not really like in season one, we were encouraged to meet each other and sit in each other's trailers and, you know, have experiences and joke around on set and season two, you know, you're wearing a mask and you, you, you kind of have to be careful. You don't want to expose anybody. There was a lot of potential. This was, I think the first round of vaccines had just come out. So there was a little bit of a buffer, but, you know, we, we were inhibited in that they, they wanted to maintain safety, uh, above all and, and, and minimize the risk of possible infection spread. So. We, uh, you know, we had to we stick to our own places. There was a couple times, like the basketball games, when we were outside, we were, we were able to talk uh, and then seeing each other outside anytime, our trailers. Um, so it was, they were able to, the producers were able to create um, a schedule where everybody was able to come in and work um, the most efficient uh, schedule they could without, um, I guess without being wasted on set, mm -hmm. like you, you usually worked in blocks uh, to where like in the previous season, it was like, you know, I'd work a day one week and then week two, I would work at the end of the week. It seemed a little more consistent this time. And that's, I mean, it's, it's great. We have great line producers, great production uh, offices that just were able to kind of piece that together because it's a, it's a thousand word, it's a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle that you know somebody throws at the floor and then it's their job to put it all together to make sure we can shoot in the mm -hmm. schedules. And it's, it's such a hard job and it, it never gets noticed unless it goes wrong. And so uh, I, I, I love those guys, those guys and gals. I mean, it's, it's such a, an integral part of what we do. Awesome. Do you have any major similarities or differences to Trotter? Ah, uh, let's see. Um, he is a yoga teacher and I uh, try to be a yoga teacher um, <laughs> that uh, fails often. Uh, I've, I have taken up yoga over the, cat, the last couple of like years, I'd say on and off. Um, and luckily they, 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 you know, he's, he's not presented as an expert. Uh, otherwise I'd have a lot of work to do. Um, I think, you know, ultimately as actors, we bring ourselves to every character, the good and the bad. Um, and I think he is like me dialed up to 11 more times than not. Uh, so it's it's often just, you know, maybe having a cold brew before I show up to set or, uh, or you know, kind of a, just, he forces me to, to have this outlook on life. Um, and it's not hard once you get on set because it's my favorite thing to do in the world. It's to be to be an actor, but you know he, he forces me to be because uh, I've said this before. He, Trotter is a, a character that lives in the moment. He lives for the process, not the result, which is one of my favorite things about him. And I think as he was constructed by the writers, it's just such a genius thing. And that's why he's a yoga teacher and he's you know Zen and he's able to kind of give perspective to things because he's in the moment, you know, mm -hmm. second by second. And I strive I strive to be that way as a as a person as well. And I kind of have to force myself to do that whenever, whenever I'm him, and it ultimately it becomes a, a better viewing experience and a better uh, fulfillment of character for me when I'm able to do that. Mm. And we're both hilarious. Yeah, I'll say that's, that. That's yeah. accurate. Yeah, we are really so funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like that is that is Trotter's personality is the uh, dry wit, and that's why I think that's why he's such a fan favorite. I, I I got lucky. The the writers they give me so much. The writers and directors they just they throw softballs over the plate, and I I'm just like I've got the biggest bat and just knocking them out of the park because they set me up for such really interesting commentary to to be able to 
lend my voice in a in a humor uh, in a funny way to kind of give the characters the perspective the perspective that they that they need, and it's done in such a clever way because everybody locks into each other in this community of serenity. So my story is so entwined with the Magnolias and the other characters mm -hmm. because what I'm going through in season two relates to all of them with family mm -hmm. and, and raising children. And that's just something that's so clever and smart about what Cheryl and his writers do. I feel like I'm, I, I'm not being paid by Cheryl and the writers. I swear to God, I just have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of respect because it is, it is a hard thing to do and it's, it's a brave thing to do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun showing up to see what they've, they've written for me. And, uh, and it's really fun to work with Norman, um, <laughs> Norman Buckley, who's one of the, he, one of the directors is a co-EP too. He, early on, uh, we didn't really have a lot of, uh, I didn't do a lot of his episodes in season one, but in season two, I got to do a bunch of them. Uh, and he's really great. He's just such an insightful guy. And he's he's a fan of film too. Like he, he, we you know, have discussions about the last picture show. He's from Fort Worth and like all of these golden age Hollywood types of things. So he's a, he's a great guy. I like working with him a lot too. So we know that uh, Sweet Magnolias has a lot of Southern sayings. Do you have a favorite? Oh my gosh, do I have a favorite? There's so many good ones. <laughs> there is. <laughs> I, every, I, especially watching season two, watching the mm -hmm. stuff that I was not in, I was, I would, <laughs> I would just awe, in awe every time uh, all of the, the expressions that Cheryl was able to come up with. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. No, dude. I do remember like there was a line about the jackdaws in, in, uh, in, I think it's episode one or two that I say, and I had to ask Cheryl, I was like, what's a jackdaw? And she was like, it's, it's like a bird. They like congregate and they like gossip. And I was like, oh my God, I had no idea, Cheryl. This is so specific. And I'm from the South. I've never heard that before. I've, I've had that too. Um, because me and Amanda are both from the South too. And so we've uh, several times been like, I've never heard that though, but I like it, but I've never heard it. <laughs> I'd have to think about my favorite saying though. I mean, everything that Trotter says probably. Obviously. I mean, that's a given. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you explained what the jackdaw is because I had no idea what that was either. Yeah, I just was just gonna no let idea. the line go. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I looked it up. It's valid. I was like, okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm from Wisconsin, so all of these sayings are just like amazing to me. My favorite. I like the one where it's you don't have the sense God gave a goose, and they're just like just yes. things like that are just so great, <laughs> and they're so snuck in there. And the bless your heart thing. These girls had to explain to me that. Bless your heart is not usually a kind thing to say. I didn't know that before I started doing this. There's a duality, bless your heart, which yes. I think is really fun. And the, the show plays with that very often. Yes. Oh, that's a creative way to get around <laughs> saying what you really want to say. I know. You're ideally, so pretty. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. another good one. <laughs> so pretty. Of all the projects that you have been a part of and worked on, do you have a favorite role that you've played or... A favorite set that you've worked on? Well, this is going to sound like recency bias. And again, it's going to sound like they're paying me to say this, but Sweet Magnolias <laughs> truly is a great experience because it, it does have this, such a familiar and familial uh, uh, environment to work in. Everything is, is, is so excited to be there and they show up, you know, prepared and, and, and really excited to do what we do. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. But uh, so when you find it like consistently throughout people on this one show, it's, it's, it's such a rewarding experience. Um, and Cheryl really just kind of leads from the top uh, with, with such a, a great, by setting a great example and that, you know, best idea wins. We're here to have fun. We're making something, you know, we're, we're sure we're getting paid for this and there are high stakes and, and doing what we do. But like, ultimately, it's, we're here to, you know, tell a story and ideally the story will, will help it. Uh, you know, the people that hear it and whatever they need in their lives. And so that, like that understanding of like having this great environment, but also telling, telling this story that just can enrich and, and um, uh, really fulfill people's lives. I, I think that's, that's been a great uh, experience outside of Sweet Magnolia. just because I feel like I'm, I'm shilling for Netflix here, but uh <laughs> Um, so I had an opportunity to do a movie a couple of years ago called The Big Short, uh, and I got to work with an actor who I really admired and respected and uh, didn't, didn't think it was going to happen for a long time in, uh, in Christian Bale. And 
Uh, I so the big short. I don't know if y'all are familiar with the movie. It's about I watched uh, it this morning actually. <laughs> hey, all right, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's about the 2008 financial crisis that Adam McKay directed and wrote. Um, and it was I had read the Michael Lewis book before because my dad was a big Michael Lewis fan. And so when I heard the production team was getting that together, I was like, I have to get on this. And I have no control over any of this. But I was like, I'm going to be in this movie. And I, you know, I got the role and audition and everything like that. And I ended up being in the movie. This is incredible. Like, I love this story. I want to be a part of this story. Uh, and so the first thing I shot, my first day was the entire production's first day. So it was Christian Bale's first day. It was Adam McKay's first day. It was absolutely nerve wracking. Um, but it was so great to see how everybody operated at that level and how uh, specifically Adam was was so willing to let everybody like we're going to do this scene as written like three or four times and then we're going to improv uh, and then to see like one of my you know uh, one of my icons one of my heroes Christian Bale across the desk uh, just giving this performance that I had no idea was going to come out of him was just astounding and so a lot of those shots of me and that that particular scene early on or like just in awe because I was actually in awe. I, I could not believe the situation that I had found myself in uh, being on the opposite side of the desk as him. And uh, I worked on the movie for about two weeks and showing up every day was just incredible to see what those uh, those crash people were able to do with, with um, I won't say limited resources, but like using the resources in a really interesting way. Mm. Um, and I, I, it's, not, it's an experience I, I won't ever forget just because of uh, who was involved in that and how the finished product turned out. So I, I'd have to say that one and Sweet Magnolias, of course. <laughs> there is no list off camera that we can't see where it's all the list of compliments that you have yeah. to say to them, right? <laughs> so I've got one, <laughs> two, down. three. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I haven't mentioned Frank. Uh, yeah, no, I need to mention Frank. <laughs> Oh, Frank Oakley. How was y'all's chat with him? I love that guy. It was fun. He's a he lot of fun. So fun. Yeah, we're, yeah. We are, we're pushing for Holland for mayor. For I was just yes. about, yeah. yeah, I was about to ask that. That was something I was going to find out because Frank has, you know, he said that he thinks that Harlan would make a great mayor. So I had sort of two questions here. One, what do you think that Trotter, you would like to see from him and his character next season? And the, if, fingers crossed, that happens. And then as far as the mayor goes, who, who's got your vote? Uh, Mary Vaughn has got my vote for mayor. Um, <laughs> oh, no. oh, just, boy. just stir in that pot. <laughs> I want to see more conflict. Let's get it like the worst. Uh, no, Frank would make it. I mean, Harlan would make a great mayor. I can't argue with that. Um, I think ultimately, like I, I'm half joking about Mary Vaughn running because I think that throws the show into more tumult. And mm -hmm. like, that's, like that's, that's what we want. Like we want conflicts, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, uh, I I don't know. And I like Allison a lot. I think she's awesome. Allison King, who plays Mary Bond, I think but she's the sweetest person in the world. She is the furthest thing from Mary Bond. Don't Vaughan, believe you. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's so good, right? Uh, but she is so sweet. We met like early on, way before we did *Sweet Magnolia*. So it was awesome to see her on set. But I think she's got my vote for mayor. I between her and. And Sam, the guy that plays Jackson, I love watching those two. Mm -hmm. like, they're some of my favorite actors on the show. Uh, I mean, it's a show stacked with actors. But, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I'd say Mary Vaughn for mayor. Uh, okay. And I then, think that uh, could work because we were trying to figure out how Netflix could possibly make her character worse than they yeah. did in season two. So that, I mean, that's, that would just got me well. <laughs> She really, she really twists the knife at the end of season two, too. I was like, oh, my gosh. She's really going for it. Oh, no. Mm. As far as Trotter, uh, I think, like, and realistically, kind of picking up off of season two, I'd be interested to see where they go. But the, the God's honest truth is the only thing I want for Trotter in season three, we get a season three, is that he's in it. Like, I... After that, I have, I have zero cares or concerns about where they take him. In fact, everything has been such a surprise where they go with that character that I, it's been such a joy. Um, I know it's kind of a cop-out answer, but they've just been able to do such interesting things with that character. And I do hope, you know, tailing off of season two, I do hope there is a follow-through. Uh, 
about that story. I don't know if we can spoil anything. <laughs> we've already uh, we've already talked it all through. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I hope there's an exploration of, of the family uh, adoption and that's at the heart of the story of Trotter and Ashley uh, finding somebody to adopt, specifically an older child, which uh, on set, I remember Ch Cheryl was talking to me about that and how that's just so, I don't know if it's under discussed, but it, it the the, I guess the from a storytelling point of view, the the easier thing to do would be like you know adopting a baby. Mm -hmm. It's it's you know it's something we kind of understand already, but there's an opportunity to explore adoption uh, with with older kids uh, that I feel like I haven't seen a whole lot. Not that there hasn't been, but you know to me as a viewer, that mm -hmm. seems more fulfilling of an experience yeah. to, to yeah. be able to address those things. Uh, so I really, I, I kind of hope it goes ins and outs of like what that is. And, and then ultimately I, I like that Trotter has been able to position himself as somebody who kind of knows a lot about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see him. And I think parenthood is that uh, like come up against things that he doesn't know a lot about. And like, it feels like they're teeing that up for him to be challenged and kind of stuck and unsure. Like I'm excited at the potential for what that could bring for a season three, mm -hmm. because, you know, when he doesn't have a joke or when he doesn't have a, like the, the wisdom that's been instilled in him by past experiences, I, I want to know what that character goes to. And I, I'd love to be able to kind of uh, uh, explore that in a, in a potential story of season three. So yeah, I guess that would be my answer. Mm -hmm. And more basketball, of course, more basketball. <laughs> Fun. Just three um, straight episodes of nothing but yeah. basketball. Great back to back, back maybe some tennis or some pickleball. I don't know. You know, pickleball. There. there you go. Oh, yeah. That's pickleball. That's a good one. Love. <laughs> Do you have a favorite TV show that you would love to have a chance to work on, or a favorite actor that you'd like to work with, other than Christian Bale? Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. I got that one. Um, favorite actor. It's funny, the favorite actor thing is a revolving door. When I see somebody that I like, I'm like, oh, he's my favorite actor. She's my favorite actor. Yeah. Oh, that's, jeez, uh, um, uh, favorite TV show. Let's see if I can tee that one up first. Uh, it's funny because a lot of the stuff that I'm watching right now is uh, is like these, you know, limited series. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, I don't think they're going to do a season two. I just started uh, the HBO Winning Time, uh, the story about the Lakers. And oh, really Really, and I'm a huge basketball fan too. It's mm -hmm. it's interesting to see what the what they're gonna do. And again, that's Adam McKay as well. Um, okay, I crossed him off the list twice. Okay. <laughs> um, um, no, I you know I back in the day, Breaking Bad was such a, mm -hmm. an incredible show, and that was something that was just so captivating to watch. And you know, they're not gonna remake that show, and they're not gonna do another season of that show. But you know, if I had been back then, that was always something. It was right as I was getting going, and I had one of my acting teachers was on it, and I was like, oh, I want to get on this show. <laughs> um, gosh, this is a really good question. I mean, I'm excited by all of the possibilities. Every audition that comes in, like, you know, that's the job is to find something of mm -hmm. you and interest in yourself. Um, I will say this, my buddies in this show, and I know they already finished it, but I really, really like Ozark a lot too. Okay. Uh, again, Great. shilling for the Netflix family, but that's a, that's a really fun one. I like that. Oh, okay, this is it, I got it. I've been, <laughs> I've been biding my time just till I got to this. The big reveal. The big reveal, right? Uh, so I love Abbott Elementary. It's the show on oh, ABC. Yes. I don't know if you guys watch that. It is I incredible. <laughs> uh i love that cast it's so well written and it's just they do something in that they're showing like you know what it is to to be in the education system especially in the public schools and it's just it's it's you know giving people the the, the laughter and this the soul enriching thing uh, so i think i want to be on that show i think what uh what quinta and that crew has done is awesome so that's my answer and maybe maybe that's two answers because i'd love to work with quinta uh, as well Quinta Brunson, the showrunner and the lead of that show. I think she's so funny and she's one of the most talented people in that she's a writer and a comedian and an actress. And yeah, yeah, dual answer for that. <laughs> awesome. So we ask everybody that question and I want to say our top three answers are Breaking Bad, Ozark, Ozark, yeah, and Yellowstone. And Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. those are the three shows what? everybody wants to work on jeez i'm just a generic slouch well jeez but you said have an elementary we have never heard that one before we haven't and that, that was your big reveal so exactly that's all that really counts We've never gotten to Abbott that. Elementary. Yeah, I'm sure you'll start to. That show feels like it's building a lot of awesome momentum mm-hmm. too. Yeah, it is really good. I've enjoyed it so far. I will say now that we're we have to you know mention Netflix at least five more times in this interview. Um, yeah. <laughs> the guy who plays Ashley, your husband. It took us a while to realize. Holy yeah. crap, he's the bad dad from from Outer Banks. It was Outer really Banks. hard. Yeah, because <laughs> he's so unlikable on on Outer Banks, and then so yeah, unlikable. But we love his character on there. We love Ashley. Yeah. Part of that so is how yeah. you guys are together, though. Because yeah. obviously, Ashley, we didn't get his reveal in season one until near the end. Yeah. Of, we didn't see him at all. But it's the way you guys interact together that's like, aw. Yeah. yeah, he's awesome. It helps that Gary and I knew each other before this, too. We were kind of around the same group of actors, same troupe. And so I had met him once mm. or twice, I think. Uh, so I knew who he was and had seen his work. And so when you go into somebody, you know, working with somebody like that, you just, you develop a layer of trust and Ash, uh, Ashley, really in the character. <laughs> Gary, Gary's so great. And every time he shows up to set, he's just smiling. And like, we, you know, we catch up before we get on the scene and we do the scene. It's, 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 again, it's like that, that whole cast is so familiar. Mm-hmm. Everything is just, everybody's just so willing to give and to be in the scene right there with you. Um, that's so funny too, because Gary is such a her horrible person on Outer Banks. He is yeah. so bad. And so then bad. we see him in Sweet Magnolias and you guys are like, we want to adopt a baby. And all of us are like, yeah. no, 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 don't no. do it. He's going to steal that baby. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist, Sweet Magnolias is Outer Banks universe. <laughs> exactly. So if you show up in Outer Banks, I think that would just be fantastic. <laughs> oh my gosh, crossover. <laughs> we'll, we'll, talk to, we'll talk to the higher ups. There you go. Let's see we'll get it done. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> We just had our 100th episode uh, relatively recently. We did a live show for it. And one of the things we started doing was rapid fire questions. And right. we had so much fun because we only had 15 minutes with every, every cast member that we interviewed for like two hours. And so it was so much fun. So this is something we're implementing in all of our interviews now. So we have some rapid fire questions for you. Awesome. First of all, before we start, I want to say congratulations on 100 episodes. That's Thank amazing, you. y'all. Yes. Come on. It Thank was. It was a pretty, we were pretty proud of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's awesome sorry to interrupt I'm no sorry. that's totally fine no you're good we'll Thank take you. all the praise you have for us i mean we're, we're okay with that <laughs> Got it. all right so we'll start out kind of easy okay chocolate or vanilla chocolate that was ooh, that was a real fast answer yeah yeah all right early bird or night owl night owl there you i go. hate it too i hate it <laughs> Frank was talking about how he was a morning person. We we're like, I, I don't understand you. <laughs> yeah, just a rare breed. So yeah. folks got a lot of love for him. Well, I'm in bed at 8:30 p.m. every night. Yes. I don't know how you get it, that. girl. <laughs> get that I like, rest. I like my sleep at night. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, explore space or explore the ocean? Uh, ocean. I've always been drawn to water. I don't know why. <laughs> I love the ocean. I love going to the beach. I love swimming. Terrified of what do they call it? Vasilacophobia, which is like you can't see past your feet. Mm-hmm. Oh. Terrified of that, but it's just so interesting. I don't know what's down there. Who knows? I mean, mm-hmm. exactly I sure hope it's why dinosaurs. I don't get in there. You sure hope it's <laughs> yeah. what? I sure hope it's dinosaurs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fantastic. I'm turning into Trotter. I'm sorry. I got to turn it off sometimes. <laughs> All right. Um, Star Wars or Star Trek? Trek? Star Wars. Oh, yeah. That was an early, early thing. New Hope came very early for me. <laughs> My brother won't let me watch it with him anymore because I got confused over who the difference between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker. I thought That's okay. One. <laughs> Don't ever let any Star Wars fan shame you for not knowing the things. Shame on them is what we should. Shame That's on right. them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I like the you enjoy the thing. You should educate us instead of dismissing us. <laughs> That's right. I know. How dare they? They're out. Right. All right. Teleportation. Wow. I love that. I can't remember. Teleportation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a hard, that's a really hard word, you guys. Okay. Teleportation Sorry. or mind reading. <laughs> Teleportation. Yeah. I need some mystery. I can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's too much information. Mind reading, I think I would feel like would be really annoying. Oh, uh, yeah. After a no little way. bit. Especially I, mean, I don't want to hear off. what you're thinking. 
If it could be selective mind reading, there you like go. that's <laughs> good. But I don't want to hear everybody's thoughts. Nope. No, yeah. Ooh, that would I, be I impressive. Just being anywhere at a specific time, I'll take that. No flying, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, amusement park or water park? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm really curious what your reaction Wait. though. Wait. Okay. Okay, because, okay, man, I, I, as a kid, water parks were the most incredible thing ever, right? Mm-hmm. And then you grow up and you're like, ah, that water is probably not so great. Gross. <laughs> yeah. so gross. gross. I had like fondest memories from water parks at this place in Florida. And I was like, what an amazing time. And then years later, I'm like, well, the water is awful. Like, no, thank you. So just based on that, oh my gosh, theme park. Oh, it's a yeah. little bit, yeah. Oh, I will say, but, yeah, I agree with you on it. I don't get in the pools in public places. So. Too much. <laughs> Only when I can see that many kids in there. Yeah, it's like I. <laughs> mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, ghosts or aliens? Oh, ghosts. Yeah, there's something spooky about that. I think I caught that early on, like haunted stories and ghosts mm. and scary stories to tell in the dark. I was like, yeah, please. Yep. Yeah. Are you afraid of the dark was always on in my house as kids. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. That was integral in the oh my God, I love that show. Mm-hmm. There's a Hulu documentary. Oh, there goes Hulu. Uh <laughs> called, uh, <laughs> called the uh the Orange Years, and it's about Nickelodeon, like in the heyday and when they were doing like Whoa. Snick and stuff. Uh and they talk oh, about Are You Afraid Snick. of the Dark? Awesome. Yeah, I forgot all about that until that. you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. So good. Take that trip down memory lane, ladies. It was really Do nice it. to hear someone bring up VHS tapes too, because Jeanette That's and I right. are the resident old people here. Yes. Uh, and we got some like mid twenties in our group that are admins. Mm. And we're like, I don't. I've never been to a, a blockbuster or a whatever. <laughs> oh man, that's so sad. sad. <laughs> what a joy that was. I still miss that so mm-hmm. much. Okay. I miss blockbusters like on the weekends. Yeah. That's where oh, I also nice. got the most sales in Girl Scouts, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, <laughs> you that out there. The, nowadays you park the Girl Scouts in front of the dispensaries and it just flies off the shelf. <laughs> <I think that's-, laughs> that's just smart parenting right there. Smart parenting right there. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. All right. Uh, board games or card games? Card games. I grew up playing old Cajun French. I don't have to provide context. Keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> fine. We love, the we love the context. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a lot of old Cajun card games growing up with these old old men and women who spoke nothing but Cajun French and I couldn't understand a thing of it, but they would they would take my allowance. That's it. Card <laughs> games. The name of the game was Here's My Money. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of family in Louisiana. I get it. All right, uh, country or city? Country. Yeah, I agree. Sour or sweet? Sweet. What about salty or sweet? Mm. Salty. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I agree. Uh, dog or cat? Dog. I'm Ooh. allergic to cat. Aww. I used to be two, and I now I have four. Oh, that's Worked cool. Through it. Maybe that's what I need some exposure therapy. Because I love cats. Cats are so funny. Like I used to just, you know, sneer at them because they made me sneeze as a kid. But like now, like just observing them, they they could give a yep. flying F. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. It. <laughs> they do not care. That's it's why so I love funny. them. Mm-hmm. Same. I'm a mom. I'm a, I'm a mom of all three. I have a dog. I have cats. I got kids. <laughs> I got a zoo. All right. Uh cardio or weights? Uh weights. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Text or phone call? Oh, you got me. God, it's text. It's so easy. It's too oh. easy. We've lost the ability to talk yes. to people. It should be phone call. To be fair, yeah, I hate, I won't talk on the phone. I would, I would text you until you come in person. I'd rather talk to you in yes. person. That's, that's gotta be the answer. Okay. Text to person. Yeah. Yes. Phone. Yes. Right. Who wants to talk on a phone? Mm. so shame not me mm-hmm. all right skiing or snowboarding snowboarding uh yeah snowboarding i mean just please don't let me tear my mcl or acl it's, uh, it's oh. all terrible yeah. we did i actually i tore my acl at a water park which is oh the, the it all comes back <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, t- 
who were playing volleyball, but they thought it was a, a they thought it was brews. And then I took my uh, daughter up the. It was at a, I live near Wisconsin Dells, so there's water parks yeah. everywhere. Now I'm a little freaked out to go to them because I didn't think about the water aspect before. <laughs> I am now though. I'm sorry. I'm Ruined sorry. It. Ruined it. Yeah. It was at the it's top like a big of bathroom. the slide. Yep. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> All right. Watch or play sports? Play sports. Take a ball, potentially. Yeah, I mean, everything. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Online or in-person shopping? Yeah, they really just afford us so much. Everything's at our fingertips. I think in-person, because I like the experience. I like the thing, you know, I like the social interaction. I like to to get out and see people, to see things and tactile experiences and all of them. In person, God, it's so easy to just see Amazon. Depends on what kind of shopping, though. See, yeah. I agree with that. There's, there's certain like, I cannot tell you the last time I went to a mall. Yeah, I don't I miss just, that. I, I no. don't, I don't miss going to the mall. But yeah. I will go to the grocery store because. Yep. I like I don't to browse. Do that either. <laughs> My click list, like I'm not, I'm not going inside. No. Yeah. It depends. I went to. Week. I went to Ikea the other day. I love that experience. Fun. It is just so I've interesting. never been to an Ikea. Ooh, put Ikea. it on the bucket list. That's it what I've been told else. by everybody. We just yeah. got one near, near in Milwaukee. So I'm told I have to drive the two hours to get there. Oh, yeah. And then go see a Bucks game. <laughs> I'm not a Bucks fan. Oh, what? Wait, who? What? What? Or, what? Orlando Magic is my team. I don't know why. Oh, uh, yeah. I was too growing up because Shaq played when I was growing up. And Penny Hardaway it was for me. Oh my gosh, I had Penny Hardaway shoes. <laughs> me too. The, the black ones with the blue oh, yeah. ones. It, yeah. it was the one set. It was just like yep. this set. Those were my basketball shoes. In, in he retired too soon. Poor Penny. I love that guy. But yeah, watching him and Shaq, mm-hmm. they should have won one championship. Anyway, I agree. We'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, all right. Um, music or podcasts? Oof. Depends on the day. Lately, it's For podcasts, me. but you know, at the gym, it's music. I think, especially if it's FFC, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Only like us. <laughs> That's on your list too. That's right. <laughs> All right. Cake or pie? Cake, chocolate cake, no icing. Just a, you know, just a brownie. It's just. A brownie. <laughs> Uh, wow, I really worked through that one. <laughs> <laughs> really fast. <laughs> I think I was like, I think we have a question somewhere that we could It was brownie. one of contention between okay. Logan Allen and Simone Lockhart. Of oh Cookie man, they went, brownie. they went cutthroat. Like they were, yeah. them on it was together. It was, and mm-hmm. it was really intense. <laughs> I love their story in this season too. I, I had no idea what they were doing. I would see them on set and I'm like, cool, I hope it works. I hope your scenes go well. And then I watched it and I was like, oh, this is so cute. This is so endearing. Yeah. I love them. We were definitely trying to set them up on a date when we interviewed them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if we get a season three, I'll let you know about that. There, okay, good. He's got to take the inside man. Game. That's right. We need to know. All right. Um, tea or coffee? Coffee. Mm-hmm. Black man. coffee. Just oh. dark. No. It's awful. Yeah. It's like comes out of the sludge yeah it's like molasses slowly yeah, exactly. trickles out it's just you know it takes a minute and a half to pour <laughs> Gosh, mm. no. i can just see it in my head yeah it's like, really no. turned <laughs> sorry y'all <laughs> i'm just seeing like sludge right now all right um football or baseball football yeah, what team yeah, football. Mm. the saints the new orleans oh. saints yeah i mean like what teams? What are we working with here? The I mean, Packers. As soon as he That's said he's from the Louisiana. Packers the Packers, yeah. yeah. You got your guy back, too. Aaron Rodgers. Come yeah. back. He's going to lead you all to victory. I don't know about that, though. Yeah, I don't know. Um, he could have performed better last year. Yeah, maybe it'll force him to do better this year. Let's hope. Yeah, I just have disappointment every single year. And just... She's a Dallas Cowboys fan. Uh, <laughs> Look at oh. the recognition when you say Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> America's it's, team. You know what? It's really hard. And I feel like everybody should be a lot nicer to us fans because <laughs> it's really hard right now hard to, to be a Cowboys. fan. It's <laughs> true. I think uh, we're not going to get into hot t- hot sports takes. 
I like Dak a lot too. I think he's awesome. Mm-hmm. I think they need a coach. There was an episode I was watching where he was delivering, I don't remember what it was, but he was delivering groceries to a random person. Yeah. He opened the door and she had an Aaron Rodgers jersey on. <laughs> now he's like, take that off. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, he's so sweet. I, I have friends that have met him before, and they say nothing but nice things about him. I think he's from Louisiana too, but I could—that could be a lie. Um, I but know he's he is, from the South. Yeah. Wow. Well, here's hoping the Cowboys got it better next year. So. We have potential. Okay. Always, always potential. We have potential. <laughs> All right. Uh, movies or TV shows? Movies. Always been movies. It started with that. Love them. Mm-hmm. Uh, laundry or dishes? laundry yeah it's like a weird like i love folding clothes i like the process i'm a very ritual process involved person so it's like taking out a dryer you want to do everything that's uh, it's and then you know pop a podcast on or some, music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. some fsc there we go yeah, we're there we go plus you know dishes dirty water so yeah i mean yeah uh, <laughs> comes back to the dirty water I, i'll do I, should be told i'd do them both i have like a I, I need order and cleanliness yes. before I can like operate. So I'll, I'll do them both if it comes to it. Yeah. I'm the type where like, I can't cook unless like my kitchen is like spotless. Same. Begin or with. like, or go to bed if the kitchen isn't like, mm-hmm. cool. like I just, and I appreciate all the others that have that consideration. Yeah. As well. it's wonderful. <laughs> I used to be like that. And then I got cancer. And so my husband is now in charge of all that. And it's making me a little crazy. <laughs> oh, Okay. Okay. I got he you. doesn't well, have the same passion for it that I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You should see mine when he tries to load the dishwasher. That's a nightmare. Kind of teach the, maybe it's season three of Sweet Magnolias is just one instructional video on how to like wash <laughs> dishes and do clothes. Three of basketball, yeah. one of Trotter showing the see how to load a dishwasher and then is learning. He's just doing housework. It's like, yep. guys, this easy. You're overthinking it. <laughs> Not hard. Yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> other hashtag other than Harlan from Air is going to be all trotter all the time. That's that's another hashtag. Oh Just instructional videos. Like yep. here's how to pin your clothes to the line. Oh my gosh, please do that. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> With commentary. That would be fantastic. That's, right. oh that's the supplemental gosh. videos. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Oh, burgers or tacos? Burgers. I Man has been. a follow-up question to that. Too. I do have a follow-up question. I, I gotta ask everybody. I'm sorry. All right. Do you eat do you eat tacos from the left or the right? From the left. That's a great question. From the left. <laughs> so it goes, yeah, left. Right, <laughs> right is oh man. What a great question. Wow. <laughs> Amanda and I, we're we're just gonna do like a Comic Con style event in 2024. So we're going to some conventions to kind of do recon. And we went to one where they have a panel and they have people on the sides asking questions. And that was one of the fan questions that she asked every single person on that panel. It was so fun Amazing. to watch them turn it, around and try to mimic eating a taco to see which one <laughs> Like playing a flute? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is there a correlation between people who are left-handed and right-handed and whether they prefer left or right? It didn't right? appear to be. It didn't appear huh. to be. It's, it seemed very random. <laughs> wow. What a special thing. Wow. You know. That's lovely. <laughs> You've never thought about it before, have you? <laughs> I never have. <laughs> All right. Um, passenger or driver? Driver. God, control freak. I love driving though. Too, so. uh, pancake or waffle? Waffle. Yeah, because yeah. the syrup sits in the little cups where it's yeah. supposed to go. Yeah, yeah it's nice and green, green. Not messy. Butter. And they give you a stack of pancakes. I, I need one waffle. One <laughs> waffle, not eight or 80 pancakes. <laughs> exactly. The travesty. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I think I'm. I am perfectly happy with like a Waffle House pecan waffle. Yeah. I'm happy. It's manageable. I feel like it's a dare when they put that on your plate, those stack of pancakes. It's like, go to town. Good luck later. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Yeah. Yeah. Coke. Yeah. Dark pepper. <laughs> yeah no that, that's the real answer i grew up in the south it's dr pepper it's awesome every oh, time yeah. i see Pepper's coke or pepsi i'm like neither so there was a time growing up they had uh like cola flavored chapstick and i remember i got the mm-hmm. dr pepper kind and i love dr mm-hmm. pepper was it lip smackers might have been but i do remember eating it and that was yep. not a good idea but i was like <laughs> i love dr pepper and it's like don't eat i was like I ate it from the left side too. So <laughs> that was it right there. Yep. <laughs> from the left. 
All right. Um, spring or fall? Spring, because it kind of leads into summer. I love summer, so maybe that's the answer. No. Ugh. What about you? Fall? Is it fall? <laughs> I'm sorry. I live oh, in Wisconsin. Texas. Is I so hate beautiful. The summer. Yeah, I guess it's also dependent on where you live too. So <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. No oh season God. shaming here. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I don't like the summer. I I was born and raised in Texas, and I hate Texas summers. <laughs> Wait, what part of Texas are you from? West East? Dallas. Dallas. Okay, cool. Yeah, that was a, a stone's throw uh, from Louisiana. So we have family that we used to drive over there. And yeah, that is. Yeah. That is we have family in Louisiana. We drive back and forth. <laughs> Amen, sister. We're traveling the same roads. Oh, I was yeah. in college before I realized that Louisiana was next door to Texas. Oh, me too. <laughs> Had no idea. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Texas not great. is huge. <laughs> Yeah, public school system in Louisiana, not great. <laughs> I'm only laughing because it's true half the time. <laughs> Sorry, my my school wasn't great either. In oh no, country yeah. country I, Texas. <laughs> God bless all teachers. We sure need them. Mm, yes. All right. Uh, real plants or fake plants? Real plants. There's a responsibility involved. You gotta have. That. Right. Yeah, I kill everyone I have. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can bring them back sometimes. Do you see Amanda's beautiful bonsai tree behind her? Okay. I saw that. <laughs> that, okay, it's only dead because the cats got into it. I, I thought it was a fake dead plant. And I was like, wow, get no. it, girl. You have that fake dead plant. <laughs> it was alive and thriving before the cats dug into it one night when I'll, we forgot to close the door. <laughs> alive and thriving before the cats is a great title to your autobiography. Soon the crop. <laughs> Its name is George. <laughs> George. Wait, why George? Harrison? Uh, Grey's Anatomy fam. Uh, he names all of her it. plants. Yeah. I name all my, all my plants have names and they're all after <laughs> TV characters. So was there ever a plant named after Justin? No. Yeah. Because don't. He, no, He's the he worst. broke up Jackson and April, which are yeah. like one of my favorite couples. So he can. God. Yeah. He can he take a fly and leap. Yeah. I didn't like Matthew. <laughs> He's the worst. We should so just trash a, talk Justin. That's should. Just talk. There we go. <laughs> that's why Cal was so hard for me to watch because I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I shouldn't like him. <laughs> yeah. No, it's hard not to though. <laughs> Even though Matthew's a great guy in Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Creamy. Yeah. yeah. See, this is another hot topic one. <laughs> Yeah. This would cause us problems with a lot of people. If you say crunchy, I feel like we get upset because, all right, well, most people that like the creamy, you know, yeah. most people like creamy. Yeah, yeah, it's easy to easier to spread. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just need the, like one less obstacle to <laughs> applying my peanut butter to toast. Yeah, mm-hmm. and see, I'm not a huge peanut butter person, so the only time I'm making peanut butter like sandwiches, if I'm if if I'm making like a peanut butter banana sandwich. Mm. Oh. That's the Elvis Elvis sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna have one of those after we get off. Yes. (laughs) I had one for lunch on Friday. Like it's it's a thing. It's a staple in my house. (laughs) I can't help it. So good. All right. Uh sweet or unsweet tea? Uh when I was growing up, it was always sweet, but now that I'm older, it's unsweet. It's just Mm. weird. Yeah. Sugar kills you. (laughs) Weird. You weirdo. I still love my sweet tea. I we just got a few more for you. Yep. Uh, ninjas or pirates? Ninjas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good answer. Beach or pool? Beach. Always beach. I would live on a beach. Well, yeah, you don't like dirty water. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> karaoke or dancing? Dancing. I'm a terrible singer. I was kind of hoping to see Trotter join them in karaoke one night. <laughs> I hope they allow me to, so I can show the world how great I really am. That would be amazing. You and Frank need to both get up there. (laughs) I think in season one, Cheryl was asking Justin and I, she was like, do you guys sing? And we were both like, "Uh, we can. She was like, okay, never mind. (laughs) Like, all right, got it. All right, and our last one, pickles or olives? Ooh, both. Can I do both? I love, oh my God. I love pickled vegetables. I love olives. You can do both. I'll do pickles. Both. I'll do pickles, but I what love What kind olives. of pickles though? 
Are you one who likes like the bread and butter pickles or are you one who likes like the dill and garlic? Again, cop out answer. I love them all. Especially like a Jewish <laughs> deli pickle. Oh my gosh, semi sweet pickle. Oh my gosh. Just give them to me all. Pickle, pickle your onions, pickle your mushrooms, Just throw it all in there. I want to eat it all. Oh, mushrooms. That's one I would have never thought to eat. Yeah. I'm working oh, for mushroom. big pickle. That's my confession, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that's your real passion acting. It's just something you do to get there. That's right. I'm just trying to be the head of Big Pickle, running for mayor of Vlasic. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to wear the Stark costume, though, right? Can't wait. That'd be yeah. fantastic. Crossover. We're doing some cross promotion in the next season. <laughs> Pickles. Now you have to cross them off your list now. That's right. You talk about this guy. It's like the bingo card. It's been a weird bingo card, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We do have one final question for you that we like to ask everyone that we interview. Mm -hmm. And we just want to like, let us know, like if there's any projects you have coming up that you want to promote, or maybe if you just have something, even if it's an older project that you'd like to promote or um, tell us socials so that people can follow you and, and keep up with what's going on. Yeah, sure. Let's see. Uh, projects I have I don't want to take time to do that so I would like to promote <laughs> FFC podcast I want to promote go. that to all of you who are listening tell your friends tell your family <laughs> bring them on board to FFC we're all riding the train um and then yeah I'm on social media I'm on Instagram Twitter Facebook MySpace uh space my all of the uh, the yellow pages I'm also in the yellow pages <laughs> did For you have a MySpace schoolers. page Oh yeah, it's awful. I'm sure it's still up there, just embarrassing the heck out of me now. I need to find it and find like the your song list that you had there. That's oh, what I'm yeah. interested to know. Woo, that is a trip I don't want to take. <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna be tough. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Seriously, I, I let's see. I, I co-wrote, produced a movie a couple of years ago. It's called Lost by You. Uh, I believe you could find it on streaming. It takes place in Louisiana, but it's about a father and a daughter reconnecting on a houseboat in the Atchafalaya Basin. It's a story about, you know, the generational gap that I was experiencing with my father at the time. So it kind of transplanted that into a movie and captures a lot of the beautiful waterways and scenic uh, portraits of Louisiana. And it's uh, it was just a really ex special experience I got to make it with my friends. And it's uh, about 87 minutes. I believe it might be on Amazon or streaming on one of those platforms uh it was uh, it was a lot of fun to do and it's called lost by you again so that's me stumping for that movie awesome. i just realized by you is probably not b y y o u it's probably oh yeah sorry y o u right B -A -Y -O -U. that's it yeah. okay. <laughs> bay yeah a o by you yeah <laughs> okay well, if you want to see more of what Sweet Magnolias is ha what they're doing, what we are, what we have going on in our groups, you can join us at Sweet Magnolias Serenity Family Fan Club. We have some character spotlights we're doing, and Trotter is going to come up there eventually soon. I'm not sure what we can schedule, but Trotter's coming up. And uh, remember that you're going to start the hashtag All Trotter all the time. Yes. So let's get that going. Let's change wow. Trotter's life. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on all of our social media under Fan and Family Chats. Thank you so much, Hunter. It has been so much fun talking with you. I feel like uh, I feel like we'd be good friends. I like you. Likewise. Like <laughs> yes, this was awesome. Thank y'all so much for having me. I love the questions too. Y'all really did put a lot of thought into them. So thank y'all for dedicating the time to, to write those questions and have me on. This was awesome. Of course. Thank you. We're so glad you liked it. And we're, we're going to start putting out posts all over the place for, for Trotter Nation. Love it. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank Bye. You. Bye. <laughs> So if you guys want to find us on Facebook, all you have to do is search in Facebook for Family Fan Club. All 15, yeah, I said 15 of our groups are going to pop up for you. You want a specific group, you can always go check out our podcast pages. We will have our groups listed in there. And you can find us on any of our social media, which is Twitter and Instagram and TikTok as Fandom Family Chats. And we are constantly trying to get you fun content. Jeanette is our TikTok wizard trying to get you fun videos there usually has a lot of dudes on there so there's a you know there's that for you <laughs> we have our twitter and instagram is not as active as we'd like it to be and we're working on that but still if you have any questions for us if you want to get involved with what we're doing if you want to know more about what we do or maybe some interviews we have coming down the pike you can hit us up on any of those resources or you can email us at familyfanclub2021 at gmail.com we check that almost religiously so 
reach out to us there and we'll get back to you. Watch out for our website coming soon. We're going to have some merch available for you if you'd like to wear some of our show merchandise for family fan clubs and fandom family chats as well as we're going to make some FFC merch for some of the shows we run like Team Wolf or Vampire Diaries. We're going to have some fun things for you there. So watch out for that. Keep an eye out for that. And uh, if you are able to look at our YouTube page, subscribe to that and keep an eye on our on our Facebook page. We have Fandom Family Chats. We're going to make some announcements here in the near future about a big, 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 huge event we've got coming down the pike in June of 2023. So, watch out for that. Get ready to listen to some crazy stuff next week again, and we'll see you real soon. <laughs>